Good morning, everybody. On behalf of Vitiva Capital Management and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, we would like to welcome you back from the weekend and thank you for joining us on our breakfast meeting this morning. It is Monday, the 25th of October, 2021. As always, this meeting is being recorded and the audio file may be shared with third parties. The meeting is, being also, is also being broadcast live on our Tiva online page on Facebook and is set to last for 30 minutes. Over the course of the meeting, if you do have a question after or during, sorry, after, over the course of the meeting, if you do have a question over what our presenters have said, you may drop your question in the Q&A box, or you may wait till after all speakers are done. We will give you an opportunity to raise your hand and you may then ask your question. On our agenda today, Daniel Aldebisi, sorry, Joshua Aldebisi, our banking analyst, will give us a recap of the latest performance numbers for Steinbeck, IBTC, and um, UBA, after which we will move to Symbia from our Global Equities desk for a recap of Friday's activities. After that, we will move to our partners from IC Securities with their own updates on the Ghanaian capital markets. Following this, we will move to Omar again, who will cover fixed income and currencies. And finally, we will conclude with Boston from Frontier Africa reports with their own updates. Without further ado, we will now start off with Joshua and the numbers for Stambik and UBA. Good morning, Joshua. Good morning, Chidozie, and good morning, everyone. As Chidozie mentioned, I'll just be taking us through the Stambik nine month results and the UBA nine month results, which were released last week. So for Stambik, um, the nine month 21 results came in 20% lower year on year. They reported gross earnings of 146 billion, which is down from the 183 billion that they reported in the nine month period of 2020. So interest income was down 11% year on year, came in at about 73 billion. And interest expense was also down by about 26% year on year, came in at about 19 billion. So overall net interest income came in at just under 54 billion. Non-interest income was also down year on year by about 28%, coming in at 73 billion. And this was down to declines in, in income from investment securities and some losses that they reported as well, even though fees and commissions was up 16% year on year. Operating expenses was 13% higher year on year, came in at, came in at about 7, 88, 83 billion, sorry. And their provisions continued um, to continue to be positive with 120% improvement year on year, coming at about 1.4 billion. So overall, this meant that profit before tax was 41% lower at 45.3 billion and profit after tax was 40% lower year on year at about 40 billion. For the Q3, we see that their results actually did improve. Gross earnings was up 10% year on year and profit after tax was up 54% year on year. So Q3 profit after tax was about 17.4 billion, up from 11.3 billion in Q2. Moving on to UBA, you see that they had a much more positive results. Their gross earnings were up 8% year on year, coming in at about 489 billion. Interest income was also up 8% year on year, coming in at about 344 billion, while interest expense was down 13% year on year at 114 billion. Net interest income therefore came in at 229 billion, which is a 23% year on year improvement. Non-interest revenue was down by 5% year on year at about 102 billion. Um, this was mainly down to a 40% decline in FX and trading gains. So the FX gains came in at about 27 billion, down from 45.7 billion in the previous year. Also on a positive, the impairments were down by about 70%. So they, came, they recorded impairments of 3.4 billion, which is actually down from the H1 period. Um, so obviously they recorded 
significant write backs in the Q3 period, which is a positive sign. Operating expenses was up by about 7% year on year. So it came in at about 206 billion. And overall, it appears that the Amcon levy was lower than expected, coming in at about 0.5% of last year's, 0.4%, excuse me, of last year's um, total assets instead of 0.5%. Then this meant that income before tax came in at about 123 billion, which is a 36% year on year improvement. And income after tax came in at about 105 billion, which is also a 36% year on year improvement. And we'll have our full reports out later today. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joshua. We will now move to Symbiot from our Global Equities Desk for Friday's recap. Good morning, Symbiot. Good morning, Dozia, and good morning to everyone. So like you mentioned, I'll be doing a quick recap of equity performance in BRVM and Nigerian markets um, for Friday. And starting in BRVM, uh, where the composite index closed flat as the gains recorded in total of 12 stocks completely counted out the losses in the 18 decliners, um, even as we saw both the BRVM agricultural and industrial indices gain a significant point. Uh, so topping the charts was Nestle Cordova, which was one of the best performing stock for the, of the week with 25% return, um, followed by Palm Cordova, uh, while investors took profit in Unilever Cordova. Uh, despite the flat close, market activity improved with volume um, increasing by uh, 900%, while turnover also went up by 17%. Going into today, we expect uh, the composite index to recover from the flat close on Friday, while market activity trades uh, mixed. Uh, for the Nigerian equity markets, um, we saw the positive run extend uh, to, la to the last trading day of the week as the OSHA index gained 14 basis points, uh, consolidating which they returned to 78 basis points. Uh, speaking a bit to the index that contributed the most to the positive close on Friday, uh, we saw the oil and gas sector closing, closing up by 2.48% on the back of price appreciations in total, Itana, Owando, and Seplat. And this could, be likely, this could likely be as a result of the continued rise in global oil prices. And uh, we will continue to monitor to see if this would be the beginning of another, of, another, <clears throat> of another rally like we had in Q2 and early Q3, where year-to-date return for that sector got to about 66%. Uh, for the consumer goods space, uh, we saw Unilever gaining 9.85% on Friday, uh, reacting positively to the impressive nine-month 2021 financial numbers, uh, where revenue grew by 31% year on year, and uh, profit after tax also improved by 152%. Uh, we also saw uh, the same reaction uh, in the PZQ1 numbers where the company also grew revenue by 18% and um, profit after tax also surged by about um, 200%. Uh, so speaking on market activity on Friday, uh, we saw this recover from previous lows as volume and value traded improved by 135% and 75% respectively. Um, so overall, uh, despite uh, the first listing of the NJS group on the exchange, Activity levels declined this week as uh, interest in the banking space continues to, to, continues to win. Uh, therefore, we expect the market to trade mixed today as investors continue to buy gain hunts while taking profit on recent gainers. Uh, thank you, Adabio from the Equity Dex. Thank you, Symbia. We will now move to Daniel and Johnson from IC Securities with their own updates. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Doze, and good morning to all of you on this call. I'll first start off with the treasury bill space. The government of Ghana was unable to meet its target once again at the regular treasury bill auction on Friday. It raised approximately 994 million Ghana cities, which was around 92% of the target amount. For 91 and 182 day bills. 
Yields for 91 and 92 day bills rose by one basis point and two basis points to 12.46% and 13.16% respectively. We attribute the declined participation levels to tight liquidity on the secondary market. On the local currency bond market, activity was buoyant last week, characterized by high tender selling interest around the belly and the back end of the curve. Yields rose around 20 to 30 basis points at the belly and back end from the preceding week. January 2027 paper dealt at 20.25%, while 29th traded around 20.15% levels. We tip secondary market to see increased activity this week as local pension fund managers seek to rebalance their portfolios at month end. And finally, in the eurobond space, Ghana Kev is trading at the highest yield amongst its peers, indicating market fiscal concerns and heavy positioning. So far, authorities haven't shown a willingness to change policy stance, either via accelerating fiscal consolidation or approaching IMF. Investors are awaiting the details of the 2022 budget in November in order to make further decisions. That's all for fixed income. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. We will now move to Johnson for equities. Good morning, Johnson. Hi, good morning, and welcome to another week. The Ghana stock market edged higher during last week's session on the back of two gainers and no loser ahead of the third quarter earnings season. Local demand for benzoyl palm plantation PLC bulk and Total Ghana continued to apply upward pressure on pricing with a deal recording gains of 10% and 0.2% respectively. However, banks and telcos ended the week unchanged. Consequently, the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index increased marginally by 1.44 points to close at 46.75% on a year-to-date basis. Markets turnover doubled to 14.4 million from the previous week, with MT and Ghana maintaining dominance with uh, over 56% of the total traded value. For the week ahead, we expect some tapering and optimism as participants await cues in the third quarter financial reporting, which have been trickling in since last week, Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johnson. We will now move to Amorige for fixed income and currency. Good morning, Amorige. Good morning, Dozier. Good morning, everybody. Um, on the back of the bond auction settlement of about 182 billion on Friday, um, system liquidity declined significantly to open at um, 222 billion negative from the 67 billion positive that was recorded on Thursday. As a result of the significant decline in system liquidity on Friday, interbank rate tightened by an average of from 438 basis points, as OBB and overnight rate closed at 19% and 19.25% respectively. For today, we expect interbank rate to trade at lower levels as funding pressure reduces. Um, the parallel market traded at um, 574 dollar on Friday, while the annual window put at 414.1 to dollar. The highest trade that was recorded on Friday was um, 429 naira to a dollar, while the closing rate was 415.07 naira to a dollar. Brent and WTI gained 0.3% and 0.6% to open today at 85.79 and 84.24 dollars per barrel, respectively, amid tight supply. And this is the highest um, WTI price has been recorded in seven years. And the TB's market closed last week on a muted note with new sentiment seen across both the short and long end of the benchmark of we observed interest on the mid to long dated maturities, especially on the 31st 20, March 2022 and the 13th October 2022 maturities as rate on the 13th October 2022 maturity trended lower intraday to 6.3% um, levels from the 6.5% levels that was recorded on Thursday. Um, trades were majorly consummated on the long dated papers, particularly on the 25th August 2022, 29th September 2022, and the 13th October 2022 maturities, while average benchmark rate declined by about 10 basis points to close um, 
at 5.2% levels on Friday. The Omo segment also traded on a muted note with interest majorly seen on the 4th October 2022 maturity, while trades were also consummated on that maturity. Overall, average benchmark rate remained unchanged at 6.28% levels. The bonds market closed last week on a quiet note as employers continue to take profit from their bond auction winnings, witness interest majorly on the maturities across the benchmark curve, especially on the 2026, 2037, 2049s, white trades were largely consummated on the 2026, 2036, and the 2050 maturities. Overall, average benchmark rate remained unchanged at 12.11% levels. The Euro bond market also traded on, traded on a very active note to close last week as buy side interest we have seen across both the sovereigns and the corporates. The sovereigns that enjoyed the most action on Friday were the Nigeria 2025, 2027, 2032, 2038, 2047, 2049, and the 2051. While the most actively um, traded corporates were the Assets Bank 2026 and the Echo Bank 2031 Euro Bond. The newly launched Fidelity Bank Euro Bond is still trading at um, the issue price. We have not really seen a lot of volatility in that space. And um, from fillers in the market, we heard that. Um, majority of what was allotted was um, allotted to some investors who are willing to hold the bond to maturity. So that's the reason why we have not really seen a lot of volatility in that particular space. For today, we believe that the bonds market will continue to trade actively as our players continue to try to take profit from their bond auction winnings from last week, while we expect the TB's market to continue to trade in line with the level of system. For fixed income. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. We will now move to Boston from Frontier Africa Reports and their own updates. Good morning, Boston. Yeah, good morning. Uh, a good morning, everyone, and, and welcome to a, a new week. Um, let, let's start from um, uh, North Africa, where yesterday the Central Bank of Egypt issued uh, about close to 20 billion uh, Egyptian pounds worth of treasury bills to get the, the their market week. Uh, started. Uh, in the meantime, next door in Morocco, inflation for the month of September came in at 1.2%. Uh, uh, if we scale it all down to the Southern African region, where the governor of the South African Reserve Bank uh, is uh, talking about likely increase in, in a more, uh, ripple rate for South Africa if inflation uh, persists. Uh, South Africa inflation came in in September 5.0% from about 4.9% in August. And um, um, uh, hedge funds and others are betting that uh, the inflation has come to stay in South Africa and the rate will continue to increase. So there are already bets on the table that when the uh, uh, Reserve Bank meets uh, later in November, in about four weeks from now, the, uh, the central bank would have to uh, hike interest rate. That's the uh, big story from South African environment. Uh, Angola is expecting to grow uh, next year if the virus is tackled, according to the president. They're having very serious talks on how to handle the uh, virus and the vaccination uh, issues. Uh, Gabon is looking at about three companies to be listed on the Central African Stock Exchange, which is similar to the BRVM. Uh, it's called the BV uh, Mark. That is next year. The uh, three companies will, will help to raise Gabon's uh, number of listed companies uh, on the on the regional exchange on friday we got news that egypt is also looking to list at least five state-owned enterprises uh, in within the 2021 2022 fiscal year so some of the com countries within the uh, uh, sub-saharan africa are taking a bit of more companies to uh, to the marketplace for for listing the central bank in Kenya reported, reported a net surplus of about 37 billion shillings for the 2020-2021 uh, period. One of the big issues being looked at now is the issue of hackers. Uh, Uganda banks reportedly lost about $4 million over the last one year to hackers who uh, steal identity, hack into uh, banks and, 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 and steal the funds. For Nigeria, the biggest story we're watching today is President Buhari 
uh, formally inaugurating the central bank's uh, digital currency, e Naira. We're expecting that to happen about 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, we'll be on that particular story. We'll look forward to if there are new things that we're going to hear from either the president or the governor of the central bank and other dignitaries attending that event. Another big story we're watching within the Nigeria space is the uh, First Bank of Nigeria, FBN Holdings. We're expecting to hear today formally from the SEC and from the Nigerian Exchange uh, Limited on who is now the majority shareholder and what is the shareholding structure with the weekend story, all news and back and forth about between uh, a billionaire businessman, Femi Ochedola, Diodukale, and of course, Hassan Odukale and um, uh, uh, Adenuga. All these stories are still out there. We, are, we hope that today we'll have a formal uh, closure to that. We're expecting the Ote Dollar's uh, side to uh, formally confirm its investment, which some market sources say is roughly between 40, 41 billion naira. All that is still uh, out there in, in the open. We're following that for the uh, current week as well. Thank you very much, everyone, and do have a great week. Thank you, Boson. We have now come to the question and answer portion of the meeting. For those joining us on Facebook, you may use the comment function and we will respond. While those joining us on Zoom, you may use the Q&A box or you may raise your hand and we will give you an opportunity to ask your question. We already have a question in the Q&A box and it's from BC Sander. And it goes, this is the last week of October and the year will be speedily going to a close as flurry of year end events may cause loss in focus on passage of the days. The Naira exchange, the Naira exchange is still precarious. Next year, we will see a drop in economic activities because of the concentration of the government on the election. What's the outlook for equities from Q1 2022 through Q4 2022? We will direct this question to the equities desk. Thank you. Hello, Symbia, you may respond to the question. Thank you. Okay, so before diving into the question, I would just do a brief recap of what we've seen so far this year. And um, the market for Q, Q1 posted um, significant loss and we saw the oil and gas sector in Q2 help moderate loss a bit. And um, also we saw some selected stocks like Honeywell in Q3, and FBN in last quarter helping to push the index, um, helping to push the index up as um, for Q3, the return, we had a return of about 6% that helped to moderate uh, the market's return. So for next year's outlook, uh, we expect uh, the handling of the FX policy help, um, help, um, um, help um, direct um, foreign invest, foreign portfolio investors and uh, also for the general economic activities, for example, the insecurity and um, economic environment, how uh, the fiscal policies put in place would, how um, the fiscal policies put in place would um, affect um, the, uh, the performance of listed companies. Uh, we also have some, um, the upcoming election coming up and the activities in that space would also trigger um, some of the reactions we'll see in the market. And uh, lastly, we also we'll also see um, rates in the fixed income space. If rates in the fixed income space keep inching up, that would also mean investors, for example, the risk averse um, guys, uh, like the f uh, portfolio investors, sorry, the, um, the PFAs, which were quite risk averse going more into the fixed income space and that would mean less um, um, participation in equity space and that would that would be my response to the question thank you very much symbiot um i see we have another question and it's for our banking analyst the question is please what is your view on gt co and do you see the whole co structure as value additive. 
we'll direct that question to our banking analyst, Joshua. We seem to be having technical issues with Joshua. Just give it a couple of seconds as we try to get him back. Thank you. Okay, I see that Luke has his hand up. Luke, you may go ahead and respond. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chidozi, and good morning, everyone listening. Um, so speaking, speaking to the question um, for GT, yes, we think um, the old stroke old code structure should add to return value to the bank. However, it's not something we're going to see in the near term. Um, it's more like a strategy for the long run. Um, and the reason for this is because um, the bank has really assessed its um, businesses and, and thought it would be, it would be um, important for the bank to actually delve into other non-banking businesses like um, asset management, and, and also providing platforms that can actually um, that they can actually use to you know explore the retail market, and that's what a number of banks are actually looking at at the moment. Not just GT Bank, um, we've seen Access Bank also planning to take that route as well. Um, and even in the tier two space, we've seen the likes of um, FCMB, Fidelity, and Sterling Bank um, also planning to do the same thing. Um, so for us at Vertiva, we think is a structure that is going to return value to the bank. However, it's not something we're going to see in the near term. It's more like a strategy for the long run. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. I see that we have no further questions today. So on behalf of the Tira Capital Management and our media partners at Frontier, Africa Reports, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I see Shane has his hand raised. We'll give Shane one up. Shimu an opportunity to speak. Shimu, you may go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chido, and um, thank you, everyone. Um, just to also quickly speak to the question around um, uh, outlook for equities um, in 2022. I think um, Symbiot has pretty much covered more, uh, most of it. Um, I think what we'll, what we'll, like you also mentioned, what we'll be looking at as first is the election and the electioneering activities that will pretty much kick off in 2022. Um, this is obviously going to be a distraction to the government and um, also going to be a challenge for the, for the economy. So as the, if government is able to handle this um, properly, we believe that should be a positive, but from history, we haven't seen this uh, to be so. So that that sort of um, some sort of leap on the on the economy generally. Also, we'll be looking at um, how will some of these companies that are listed perform, um, especially the likes of the banks. I think um, the banks will likely be be flat in terms of um, in terms of outlook. Uh, maybe for agri sector, we might see some level of um, improvement as well as in the as well as in the in the industrial space. Um, insecurity will be a major challenge as well. Um, just like um Symbiot has mentioned, uh, we will see how this is being tackled by government. If we are able to just take care of that, that should also moderate the sort of challenge we might see in the agri space as um, a lot of uh, a lot of these um, farmers continue to complain about the challenge um, in the Northeast as well as the North Central Zone as they go into planting. Um, FX challenge, which is also still the big elephant in the room that we've seen as well. Um, are we able to get this sorted out? Um, we believe the CBN will continue to run a managed um, FX policy. So we're not going to see this to be, we're not going to, we don't think this will be floated. So that's the, how will FPIs continue to react? FPIs will likely react um, just the way they've done in the last one and a half years. Um, maybe not putting some more money in the market or exit, uh, um, exit the market. So 2022, most likely 
will be a, a, a flat year. Um, the positive we are seeing might just be the positive we're seeing might just be in a pocket of pocket of um, sectors like I've mentioned, maybe agri and the industrial sector, but largely we will likely see a, a, a flat market but pocket of um, opportunities for for some other for some for some sectors and then um, lastly fi what was the fi space going to look like if um, fixed income if we continue to see maybe rates around 10 to 15 percent for all those 90 days on um, treasury bills we will likely also see this competing with the equities market and if, if this happens we won't see as much um, inflow from either the retail or the or the local PFAs or institutional um, investors. So all of these, if you put it together, we'll probably see some sort of um, some sort of flattish uh, market for 2022. Just that I put this um, put this out. Thank you. Thank you for that addition, Sean. Um, we have now come to the conclusion of our meeting this morning. On behalf of Vitiva Capital Management and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, we would like to thank you all for joining us this morning. We continue to encourage everyone to keep safe and we look forward to having you join us again tomorrow morning at 8.30. We hope everybody has a good day. Good morning.